Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Let Us Reason video series. Uh, we're still going through the Tawheed dilemma. Yes. And uh, you can see why this is taking us too long, myself and Sam, who is with me here in studio, because it's such an important topic. And we want to help our Muslim friends realize that the Trinity, the real doctrine of the Trinity is biblical. And that's why we believe in what we believe in, and that's why Jesus becomes extremely important, not just for us, but for them, versus the idea that there is no such thing as Trinity. There is something called Tawheed, which you cannot find in the Quran anyway. That's and right. we have proved so far that the Quran doesn't teach what our Muslim friends are talking about. With that says, that's right. Welcome aboard, Yeah, brother. again, trusting the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit will do justice to these topics and speak truth without error for His glory, because Jesus Christ is worthy and we're in love with the Son of God. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Amen. That's why we're doing what we're doing. So, <clears throat> Sam, last time we talked about chapter 19, yes. verses 16 to 21. And again, let's qualify our use of the Quran. It's because we don't believe in it. We're quoting the Quran because Muslims believe in it. So we're showing them what their own source says about these issues. Now, we left off affirming that according to the logic of the Quran, either Allah has to be the father of Jesus because he's responsible for the life of Jesus, for Mary conceiving him, or more precisely, the spirit, which introduces the dilemma, how can the Spirit be the father of Jesus <clears throat> because he gave life to Jesus if he's not God? But anyway, right. let's continue elaborating this <clears throat> teaching of the virginal conception, birth of Christ, and its implication. Now, Jesus is the only one who is conceived to and born from a blessed virgin by the power of the Spirit of Allah, <clears throat> which Muslims think is the true God. Jesus' mother is the only woman mentioned by name in the entire Quran. Mary. I just want to bring out these points because you're going to see where I'm going with this to show that even the Quran acknowledges without wanting to do so. Muhammad started making statements about Jesus that he picked up from Christians, not realizing that in affirming those things, he was pretty much exposing himself and his right. Quran, showing that he's a false prophet. Now, Mary's the only woman mentioned by name in the entire Quran. There's a chapter named after Mary, Surah al Maryam, chapter 19, which we read some verses from. So not only the only woman mentioned by name, She's the only woman that has an entire chapter named in her honor. <clears throat> and her family is the greatest family that Allah created, the most exalted of all human beings, all human families that Allah has created. And we're going to look at that in a minute. But wh where I'm going with this is this. Why is Jesus the only one who's born, and, born from a virgin, conceived to a virgin? Why is Jesus' mother the only woman mentioned in the entire Quran? Why is it her family is honored? <clears throat> as the greatest human family that Allah created. That's actually chapter 3, verse 33 of the Quran. It says that of all the beings that Allah created, He, pro he chose Adam. From Adam, He chose Abraham. And from Ab Abraham, the family of Imran. In fact, chapter 3 is named the chapter of the family of Imran. That's right. Why the family of Imran? Because Imran is supposedly the maternal grandfather of Jesus, the father of Mary. Why? The Quran doesn't tell us. And in chapter 3, verse 42, which we can use as a segue into the next uh, segment about Jesus' sinlessness. Chapter 3, verse 42, there the Quran says, Allah preferred Mary above all women, of all time, basically, all right. women, and purified her. Now, according to the Muslim expositors, when Allah created Mary, He created her <clears throat> to be absolutely sinless, free of all human imperfections, lustful desires, from her conception throughout her entire earthly life. He did the same for Jesus. So my question to the Muslim is, why did Allah give such honor to the blessed mother of our Lord, preferred her above all women, made sure that she was conceived and remained absolutely pure and sinless, and Jesus was absolutely pure and sinless, preferred her family above all creatures, the only woman mentioned by name, conceived and gave birth to Jesus without sexual intercourse by the power of the Holy Spirit. Why these honors lavished on Jesus and his mother and no one else? In fact, by way of contrast, just to contrast how amazing this is, you and I both know that according to the Islamic tradition, <clears throat> Specifically, narrations found in Sahih Muslim, the second most authentic <coughs> collection of narrations attributed to Muhammad and his companions. We're told in Sahih Muslim that the companions of Muhammad found Muhammad weeping at his mother's grave. Right. When they asked him, why are you weeping? He was weeping because he said, when I asked my Lord to forgive her, he refused. In other words, Muhammad was interceding for the salvation of his mother because his mother died as a pagan. She died during the time of Jahiliyyah, pre-Islamic ignorance. She was pretty much, you know, a, a Jahil, so to speak. 
And Allah said, no, I won't forgive her. So according to this tradition, Muhammad's mother is in hell. Another tradition the Muslim says, a man came to Muhammad whose father had died in the pre-Islamic period, what they call Jahiliyyah. Correct. So he died a pagan. He said, where's my father? Muhammad said, he's in the fire. So the man walked away sad. So then he beckoned him and called him back. He says, not only is your father in the fire, my father is in the fire also. So Muhammad affirms his father, who's named Abdullah, slave of Allah, go figure, a pagan, slave of Allah, he's in hell and Muhammad's mother's in hell. And it, Muhammad is supposed to be the greatest man that Allah created. And yet Jesus' mother, the greatest woman, absolutely sinless, her family, the greatest of all families, conceived and gave birth to Jesus while a virgin. Why? The Muslims don't have the answer. Mystery of mysteries, my brother. <clears throat> we so. have the answer though, right? Because he's the eternal son of God and the only befitting way for God's eternal, glorious, holy son to enter into creation was through a virgin without sexual intercourse so that people could know through the conception that God was truly his father. And I want to hammer this point. As God, Jesus has a father, no mother. Do you know that? God is his father. As God in his divine nature, he has a father, no mother. As man, as human, he has a mother and no father. Now tell me he's not astonishing. Mary is great because of who her son is. He's the God-man who elevates her to the status of being the greatest woman that God ever created. Amen. Amen. With that, brother, that will lead us into another important topic related to Christ, and that might take us a couple of <coughs> sessions, the sinlessness yes. of Christ, according to the Quran, actually. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, if if we can, if we want to go with, to start with the sinlessness of Christ, we need to first see what it says about <clears throat> Jesus' maternal grandmother in chapter 3, verses 35 to 36. If we can have it, chapter 3, verses 35 to 36. People can see it right now. And you see, notice there, it says, when the wife of Imran, again, the Quran assumes that Mary's father's name was Imran. That's why in chapter 3, verse 33, it says, Allah preferred the family of Imran above all creatures, not Correct. just humans, Correct. all creatures. When the wife of Imran said, Lord, I have vowed to thee in dedication what is within my womb. Receive thou this from me. So she got pregnant. So it goes, I'm consecrating my child to you. Thou hearest and knowest. When she gave birth to her, she said, notice it's a female. Lord, I have given birth, birth to her a female. And God knew very well what she had given birth to. The male is not as the female. Side note, notice that the Quran acknowledges males as superior to females. But yep. we'll return to that in future That's sessions, right. God willing. I have named her Mary, in Arabic, Maryam, and commend her to thee, I entrust her to you with her seed to protect them from the accursed Satan. So notice her prayer. O oh Allah, protect my baby Mary and her offspring from the accursed Satan. Now, did Allah honor that prayer? Did Allah answer that prayer? Yes, because we find a tradition. When we go to the next slide, you're going to see there's a tradition in Bukhari, right? Sahil Bukhari, and you and I both know Sahil Bukhari is the most authentic collection of narrations attributed to Muhammad and his followers. Sal Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 55, Number 641. Watch this. Did Allah answer the prayer? Watch. Yeah. Narrated Sayyid bin al-Musayyib, Abu Huraira, the father of the cats. That's what it means. I heard Allah's apostle saying, watch this. There's none born among the offspring of Adam, but Satan touches it. Was Muhammad an offspring of Adam? That's right. Well, that means Muhammad just admitted, Satan touched me when I was born. A child therefore cries loudly at the time of birth because of the touch of Satan, except Mary and her child. Then Abu Huraira recited, and I seek refuge with you for her and for her offspring from the outcast Satan. So according to the Hadith, Allah honored Jesus' maternal grandmother's request by making sure that Satan was prohibited Forbidden from touching his blessed mother and him, the only two human beings that Satan was not allowed to touch upon their births is Mary and Jesus. That's right. And, and I like the fact that you just mentioned Muhammad uh, acknowledged that he was touched. Yes. I mean, everyone was touched. He didn't include himself in this exception. Tainted and corrupted by Satan, except Mary and her son. Muslims, why? If and, Jesus and, and just that's a man. Another thing, my friend, my brother here, you know, Muslims really try to claim that Muhammad is sinless yeah. by virtue of the forgiveness of his sin. I think if you ask Muhammad himself, probably he will tell you, I don't know where they got this idea from. I've been Definitely. appealing for to God to forgive my sins exactly. all the time. And another sign that Muhammad's 
request hasn't been granted? Why do Muslims till this day keep praying for his salvation? Because every time they mention his name, they say, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The prayers of Allah and the peace of Allah be upon him. Why would they need Allah's peace to be upon him if he's already in a state of peace? That's right. Jesus That's right. is our peace. He doesn't need our peace. Amen. Amen to that. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, what about, uh, for instance, in chapter 19, 19, what it mentioned specifically about uh, Jesus? Oh, yeah. And uh, this, this is a teaser for the yeah, next the session. Next, yes, you know, yes. We want to venture into the phrase. Real quickly, 1919 19 says that yeah. the Spirit would give Jesus Ghulamin Zakian, a boy absolutely pure. And Lord willing, we can pick up and elaborate on the next session because this will take some time to unpack. Absolutely. And again, thank you again for everyone for joining us. I hope you've been enjoying this series. Please use it in your ministry. And if you're a Muslim, please go and examine all the passages that we've been sharing with you. Till we meet again, have a blessed day. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Also hit the bell so that you don't miss future videos. And please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash Sira International. And together we can introduce Muslims to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you.